How's it going? Uh, I wanted to walk you through how to create something like this. Basically using um, Adobe Arrows app, uh, desktop app to create a AR poster experience. So um, taking you know elements from a static poster, animating them, um, and then translating that into the um, AR space, 3D space. Um, so yeah, you'll be using this Adobe Aero desktop app. It's currently in beta, uh, but as far as I understand, it's available to everyone. Um, and we're gonna kind of start from scratch and create that uh, that example that I just showed you. Cool. Um, so when you navigate into the Aero app, um, you'll see this button here for new file. Um, and it's gonna lead you into these three sort of possible um, options. First is surface anchor, so using um, a surface like a floor or a wall um, to sort of orient um, your space and you can place 3D objects or 2D objects in that space because of the, the surface. Um, location anchor, so this is sort of using um, places on a map to um, trigger the experience. Um, and lastly, image anchor. Um, so this one's the one we're actually going to be using. So basically what's happening um, is your smartphone camera will um, be looking for a image and when um, it finds that image it's basically a um, just a yes or no sort of checkbox you can think about it like that uh, or an if statement um, if you're more familiar with code um, and if it does find that image then it will play whatever vr or sorry ar experience that you have created within the app cool so we're going to go into image anchor and hit create um, so I've created a poster here for um, this Aero demo project. And as you can see here, it's going to prompt you to select um, a file. And what it's doing is it's asking you, okay, what image would you like to use um, to trigger this effect? So I have this um, example poster JPEG file. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and hit open. Cool, and as you can see down here in the property section on the right hand side of the page, we have our image showing up right here. Um, this basically just means, hey, this is the image I wanna use. Um, if you did wanna go back and change, you can change your um, anchor type over here to the different, different options, but we are going to stick with anchor. Cool, um, on the right hand side, you can see your scene, um, which is almost kind of similar to layers in Photoshop, but right now all we have is um, our image anchor. Um, we can't really do anything to it. It's just sort of going to be present. And that's going to be the reference um, for basically our whole project. Um, Arrow also has all these sort of built in objects that you can kind of add into your scene. Um, some of these are like animated, like these characters. Um, some of these are layered illustrations, um, kind of using your different layers and um, different space um, to kind of add elements. Um, but for what we're doing, we don't really need any of that, right? Uh, we just kind of want um, to add in our own things, right? Um, so from here, I'm gonna drag over this folder. You can see that I have a sequence laid out here. Um, and basically all this is, it's an animated version of this poster. Um, it's the animation that plays on top of, um, of, of the poster trigger, right? Um, but instead of having that animation exported as uh, a video file, whether it's a .mp4 or .mov, um, it's just broken up into different images. So you can do this really easily um, in your export settings in After Effects or Premiere um, or even Photoshop if, if you have that. But uh, basically what we wanna do is just have all of these PNGs um, that just subtly change a little bit over time, right? Um, and so it's basically just when you play these really quickly in succession, um, you create um, a moving image, right? Uh, so we just have a folder with all of those frames. And uh, what I did to create this zip file is I just right clicked and hit compress. Um, and then I have a zip file. You need to zip your full folder of all these images in order to have them play um, as an animation um, or as, 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 you know, that sort of animation that you've created um, within Adobe Arrow. So I'm just gonna kind of click this and drag and drop it 
into Adobe Arrow, and you're gonna see it's gonna say here, converting sequence. So it's gonna take my sequence and it is going to upload it. Depending on how many images you have, this might take a few minutes. Um, but as you can see here, you're good to go. And it layered this in, which is really great. Um, we have a couple of problems here, but we'll address those in a minute. Um, the first thing I wanna do is just kind of show you what's happening behind the scenes, right? Um, so right now, literally nothing's happening. We just have our sequence that doesn't do anything, and we have our image trigger in there, not aligned or, or anything like that. So we need to fix all these things, right? Um, and so if you click this little running guy, um, this is called our behavior builder, um, and you can see we can add in these things called triggers. So let's click here um, and kind of figure out what's happening. So we have start. That's just going to trigger at the beginning of your experience when somebody pulls up this AR experience. We have tap, that's if somebody taps on um, the image. And then we have proximity, enter, and exit. So that's going to be uh, in your 3D space, setting up a boundary. Um, if you've ever used a VR headset, it's kind of similar, setting up this sort of 3D space. When you enter closer to your image, um, you can trigger that animation to happen. Um, for ease, we're just going to try start. Um, we're going to add an action. Um, so we have this play animation and play images. From how I understand it, play animation is more so for a 3D animated kind of image sequence. For us, since we're kind of making this uh, animation in 2D space, we're gonna use play images. Um, we are gonna get a um, new dialog box over here, right? Um, and if I hit play, nothing happens because we have this little error here that's telling us that we don't have a subject. So that's basically just telling Arrow what we want to play, right? Um, so we're gonna choose sequence. Now if I hit play, we can see our animation is happening um, right here. But this is great. Um, and we have some things that we can do here. Uh, we can control um, seconds per frame or the speed of our animation. So if I you know, increase this, we can get a kind of more quick animation. Um, we can also increase our play count and how long it takes for the animation to play with our delay. Uh, I'm gonna click on infinite because I want this to kind of keep going. And maybe I'll just set a slight delay um, so people can see the poster before it starts to animate. Great. Um, so that preview only plays through once, but as long as you have the infinite box checked um, in your actual AR experience, um, you will be able to just have that video loop forever. Okay, great. Um, the issue now is that this is um, sort of an opposite orientation, right, to our um, reference image. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on my animation and I'm gonna come down to the rotate tool. You can also hit um, R on your keyboard. Um, and then what I'm going to do is just um, kind of place this until it is roughly 90 degrees. You can also hold down shift as you rotate um, to get kind of this perfect um, 90 degrees. Um, now we have another thing happening to where it is not uh, in the perfect orientation, right? It's it's the correct rotation, but uh, so we can just click and move this until it's roughly in the same place. So now I've figured out um, where to place it in terms of movement. I'm also just gonna slightly raise this. You can see kind of when it's at the same height exactly, it has this like sort of weird effect happening. So I'm just gonna lift it slightly up, maybe by just a centimeter. Um, stylistically, you can kind of choose to put it way up higher. Or, um, you can also have multiple animated layers and have them um, at different distances away to create some depth. Um, but for this example, I'm just going to slightly offset it from um, my target image. Um, and then the other final issue is just that this thing is sort of in the wrong, um, it's in the wrong scale, right? And if we see on all sides. I mean, this is a very uh, busy composition, so it's a little hard to see. Um, but what we can do is just use our scale over here and sort of use that in conjunction with moving to get it roughly 
the same size. And when you're working in 3D space, it's always good to kind of like um, look at it from different angles uh, to make sure you know we're getting close, um, and that it doesn't look you know perfect in one angle, but Now I'm doing this quickly and my animation is just a slightly different aspect ratio than my poster, which is fine. Um, you might want to kind of make sure it's the same when you're making your animations. But um, yeah, so now we have this experience that when you trigger it, um, this animation will play. Um, and keep in mind, you can add more triggers here. So if we add another trigger, we can choose a different um, thing or we can just choose the same thing. Uh, we can also have all these things happen, right? We don't just have to play images, but we can play audio. Um, we can have, have objects that spin. Um, so just for an example here, let me pull up one more thing. So uh, imagine that you have this PNG, which uh, for me, I just took all the blue sections. I'm just gonna select those and I created a transparent PNG. So imagine like maybe we wanted to import um, this image into our uh, our scene as well. Again, we just have to fix it um, in terms of its positioning and its scale. So now I have this new layer, right, um, of um, transparent blue, and we can sort of see through it um, to the animation happening underneath. Um, but maybe I want this to move, and so maybe it starts kind of like behind the poster, you know? Um, and I can set this action on start to move, right? Um, and then if I set my offset to maybe, I don't know, like 10 centimeters, I can hit play and you can see it sort of comes up to the surface um, when you have multiple things happening like maybe an animation and this like 3d movement of layers uh, it might be good to kind of create a stagger of delays right and so if I had half a second um, to play the animation maybe I'll have a full second here for the delay so it's gonna wait a second and then it's gonna have that thing happen um, for easing, we can have, you know, kind of like a, a more curve, we can have a linear, I like the ease in, ease out for something like this. Um, and then if I increase my play count to more than one or infinite, I get this back and forth option. So if I click that, um, it'll move in and out, right? And then uh, it'll kind of like bounce and do that over and over again. So you can kind of see here how you might start to build up um, different effects and different elements that you can add into your AR composition. So it doesn't just have to be this one um, animated video that you're just playing in AR space, but you can also take elements from your composition uh, and move them in and out or do really anything. You can even add more layers here to what you want it to do if you wanted it to move in a different way or um, kind of show in a different way. Um, so all these things are really interesting to uh, try out. Uh, if you have any questions, just let me know. Uh, but I'm really, really excited to see um, what you guys all end up making um, in this new tool.